Have you ever had a stressful day and you've used food to try to cope? The American Psychological Association says it's not uncommon. Nearly 30% of adults say they eat to try to manage stress. So how do we disengage in those unhealthy behaviors? Kaylee Kirby has the answers in our next food related segment for our super fitness weight loss challenge. We are exploring the relationship between food and our emotions. We asked all of the challengers what their biggest issue is when it comes to food and emotional eating was one of the top responses. So let's dive into what it is and how we conquer it with diabetes educator Brenda Ball. Sometimes we eat for physical hunger and sometimes we eat for other reasons. Maybe we had a trigger of a really stressful day. We had a life event that was really impactful. So eating for other reasons aside from physical hunger, our emotions. Those comfort foods usually go hand in hand with emotional eating. So why is it, you know, the pastas or the chips, things like that, that is what we reach for. Yeah, some of those hyperpalable foods that we see in um, our food environment today, they really give us some comfort. The sugar, fat, and salt triggers that reward center in our brain. So it does make us feel good in the moment. Some of the difficulty is that it doesn't last. And so what we would like to do is kind of flip the script and focus more on some healthy habits that we can reinforce our new behaviors. If we know that we're an emotional eater, what are some things that we can do to get out of that kind of mindset or maybe reach for something that's better? Right, right. So there's really three steps here. So first is assess and then when you're experiencing the trigger and then what to do after. So take a step back and uh, put the pause button on and identify that feeling. So I'm feeling really stressed. I'm feeling really frustrated. Sometimes you can go for a walk or do an activity that really isn't going to be associated with eating. If I turn to my crafts and being creative, I'm doing something with my hands, I'm knitting, I'm crocheting, and that really isn't conducive to eating. So focusing on some non-food strategies, and sometimes that craving will pass because we've used our other coping mechanisms. Last question uh, before we let you go, what if we don't know if we're an emotional eater? Mm -hmm. How do we, I guess, address it and work through it? Right, right. That self-awareness I think is really important and keeping a food journal is a great strategy. And in that food journal, you can keep additional details other than uh, just what the food is that you're eating. So how did I feel? What were some of the circumstances? What kind of day did I have? Those types of details can really be a roadmap for a person. Ball says for people who are emotional eaters, the best way to stay on track is to meal plan and prep those snacks ahead of time to help keep what she calls positive and supportive food in your environment. Reporting in studio, Kaylee Kirby, WTOL 11.